very good day, I beat Madam Zaibeda, our respected financial management lecturer. I am Farnet Zwani, and before I begin further with our presentation, I would like to introduce my group members, the ones that you will be seeing in the rest of the video, which is Fati Natasha, I Natasha, Nur Amira, as well as Nabila Izzati. We as a team will be presenting on our financial ratios for the company Estonia Burhat for the year 2019 and 2020. Before we jump straight into the ratios, to understand this more clearly, financial ratios are a tool to measure a company's performance year by year. All the information that is gathered from financial ratio analysis have managers to make financial decisions for the business and external parties like investor. Each of the ratio can be compared to past time periods of data. In short, financial ratios are very important in business to know whether the business is growing or facing losses. Now that we have understood generally what financial ratios are, let's dig in deeper about the meaning of each ratio as well as their calculations. Hello, my name is Fatina Natasha and I will begin with the first ratio, which is the liquidity ratio. Liquidity ratio is defined as a type of financial ratio used to determine a company's ability to cover its short-term debt obligation. Let me explain in brief about the ratio and the liquidity ratio. Firstly is the current ratio, which measures the ability of a company to cover its short-term obligation with its current asset within one year. Secondly is the quick ratio, which measures the ability of a business to pay its short-term liabilities by having assets that are readily convertible into cash. How do we calculate the current ratio? The current ratio can be calculated by dividing current asset with the current liabilities. The current asset involved in Estonia Berhad is cash, account receivable, inventories and prepaid expenses, while current liabilities consist of account payables and accruals utilities. Once we apply the numbers into the formula, the current ratio for Estonia Berhad in 2019 is 3.06, while in 2020 is 1.92. How about the quick ratio? The quick ratio can be calculated by deducting current asset with inventory first and then dividing it with the current liabilities. Once we apply the numbers into the formula, the quick ratio for Austin Berhad in 2019 is 1.56 while in 2020 is 1.12. Next, let us see how the company was doing for both years. Is it okay or not? In 2019, the current ratio for Austonia Berhad is 3.06, means the company had 3.06 current asset for every 1 ringgit current liability and decreases by 37.3% to 1.92 in 2020. This is due to the increase of current assets by 73% in 2020. Other than that, the changes in current ratio are also affected by current liabilities which increased by 174%. Moving on to the quick ratio. The quick ratio in 2019 was 1.56, which means the company has a 1.56 current ratio exclude inventories and prepayment to meet one ringgit of current liabilities. The quick ratio has then decreased in 2020 by 28.21%, which is to 1.12. A higher quick ratio in 2019 indicates that the company could meet the current liabilities in a short time or quickly without waiting for the inventories of prepayment to turn into cash that might take a long time. While in 2020, the company's lower ratio more likely to struggle with paying that. Hello, my name is Ayn Natasha and I'll be explaining about the second ratio which is activity ratio. Activity ratio is a ratio that specifies if a firm is utilizing its available resources efficiently in order to generate sales. There are two ratios that we calculate under the activity ratio, which is average collection period and fixed asset turnover. In simple words, average collection period is a ratio that determines the average length of time that a firm takes in order to collect payment that its client owes in terms of account receivable, while fixed asset turnover is a ratio that determines the efficiency of a firm in utilizing its plant and machinery in order to generate goods for sales. 
In order to calculate this ratio, the formula that we need to use for average collection period is account receivable divided by credit sales and multiplied by 360 days. After applying the amount from Estonia Berhad Income Statement, the average collection period for the year 2019 is 29 days, while 49 days for the year 2020. On the other hand, the formula for fixed asset turnover is net sales divided by net fixed asset. After applying the amount to this formula, the fixed asset turnover for the year 2019 is 9.10 times, while for the year 2020, it is 8.41 times. But what does this calculation mean? Let's reveal the meaning behind these ratios that we calculated. As we can see, the average collection period for Estonia Berhad as of the year 2019 is 29 days, but for the year 2020, it increased drastically to 49 days, which means that Estonia Berhad took more time to collect its payment from its client, which is a negative sign for the company. On the other hand, the fixed asset turnover for the year 2019 is 9.10 times, which means that for every 1 ringgit invested by Estonia Berhad in fixed asset, a total of 9 ringgit and 10 cent is earned. While for the year 2020, the fixed asset turnover is 8.41 times, which means that for every 1 ringgit invested by Estonia Berhad in fixed asset, a total of 8 ringgit and 41 cent is earned. This shows that moving on to the year 2020, Estonia Berhad became less efficient in utilizing its plant and machinery in order to generate goods for sales. Moving on, hi, my name is Amira Tope and I will continue the presentation with the third ratio which is leverage ratio. Leverage ratio is one of the financial measurements that look at how much capital come in the form of debt or the ability of the company to meet its financial obligation, total debt ratio which is to measure a company total liabilities compared to its asset. Second, time interest and ratio, which is to measure a company to mix its debt obligation based on its current income. First, the formula to calculate total debt ratio is total liabilities divided by total asset and times by 100%. The total liabilities involved in Astonia Berhad are account payable, accrual utilities, and long-term debt, while assets involve cash, account receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses, and net plan and equipment. Once we apply the numbers into the formula, the total debt ratio for Estonia Bahia in 2019 is 45%, while in 2020 is 59%. Time interest and ratio is calculated by an Earning before interest and taxes divide by interest expenses. Once we apply the numbers into the formula, time interest and ratio is 26.2 times. So, let us see how the company financial health in both years. The total debt ratio is increasing from 45% in 2019 to 59% in 2020. This means total liabilities in 2019 is 45% while total asset is 55%. It shows that total debt ratio in 2019 is doing good. Move to 2020, it is still doing good. Unfortunately, total liabilities in 2020 is 59% while total asset is 41%. It shows that total debt ratio in 2020 is not good because it has the highest number of liabilities than assets. Lastly, for the time interest ratio, from the graph, Estonia Berhad has 26.2 times to cover their interest expenses using their current income in 2020. This means Estonia Berhad has the highest number to cover their interest expenses by the year 2020 using their current income. Hello, my name is Nabila Izati. Last but not least, I will be discussing on profitability ratio. Profitability ratio are a series of measurements used to assess a company's ability to generate profit. As the ratios increase over a trend line or are from competitors outcomes, they are deemed favorable. First is a net profit margin used to calculate the profit a company produces from its total revenue is measured the amount of net profit a company obtains per ringgit of income gains. 
Next, the return on assets (ROA) is an indicator of how profitability a company is relative to its other assets. The higher ROA number, the better because the company is earning more money on less investment. How to calculate the ratio? The formula for net profit margin is a net profit divided with total revenue and multiplied by 100. Once we apply the numbers into the formula, net profit margin for Estonia Berhad is a 40.60% in 2019 and 12.60% in 2020. Furthermore, the formula for return on asset is a net income divided with assets and multiplied by 100. After we calculate the formula, the return on asset for Estonia Berhad is 47.40% in 2019 and 33.73% in 2020. As we look at the graph, the profitability ratio for Estonia Berhad in the year 2019 is better compared to the year 2020. As I explained before, the net profit margin in 2019 is 14.60% and decreased to 12.60% in 2020. This shows that Estonia Berhad generates a more significant profit in 2019 and falls in 2020. The achievement of a high percentage in 2019 means that the company did well in managing its expenses. This situation also applies to return on asset where in 2019 is a 47.40% and then drastically decreased to 33.73% in 2020. This indicates that Estonia Berhad used the asset efficiently in 2019 compared with 2020 to generate more profit for distribution to the equity holders and internet sources. So, we have seen and heard the explanation about each of the ratios. Conclude, after unveiling all the financial ratios of Estonia Berhad, we could see clearly that they are having major downfall in its financial position. Comparing all the ratios between the year 2019 and 2020, we noticed that moving on to the year 2020, Estonia Berhad became less efficient, not only in utilizing its resources but as well as maintaining its debt and equity. Estonia Berhad is losing its financial stability and this is a pretty bad sign for the company in order for them to sustain in a foreseeable future. Therefore, we would like to advise existing shareholders to sell their investment because looking at the shifts of the ratio from 2019 to 2020, Estonia Berhad shows negative shifts in all of the ratios which are showing that Estonia Berhad is in a risky position, may come to bankruptcy, may involve in hoarding as well as inefficient in generating income for their company. We would also advise potential investors to not invest in Estonia Berhad as this company has a risky future which may not benefit the investors but the other way around. If Estonia Berhad do not strategize and take proper action from now, they may lose their existing investors and maybe even lose their company. That's all from us for this financial ratio analysis. Thank you for your time and attention.